Hello everybody, welcome back to the next university and class is back in session and we're going to talk about Web 3.0 today. Hey guys, so I'm He-Man and uh, I'm mostly uh, in the marketing world doing business and today I'm talking a little bit more about my hobby which is Web 3. So uh, this is a, just a very tip of the iceberg kind of thing of my, my portfolio. So currently, I've just hit my uh, first 100. So usually when you hit your 100, uh, 100 Ethereum profit on uh, OpenSea, usually they will give you a title called a high ROI flipper. Uh -huh. So you know that someone who literally makes money like So there's a lot of talk about Web3, but do you guys know actually what Web3 is even about? I, I had this like gathering, NFT gathering. So they actually asked me what, what Discord am I in? And I was like, how what Discord? I'm not even in the Discord. Then after that, my friend was like, yeah, this person is Web 2.1 for sure. <laughs> so I was like, how is Web 2? What is Web 3? Then I realised, oh, Web 3 is regarding NFT. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm out of it. Yeah. So we have a new student here today, Joanna. She is amazing, but she told me that she played Mahjong last night until very late. So <laughs> Not only did she sleep very late, our new professor, He-Man, also slept really, really late, but he was actually trading. So it makes sense because that's why he's teaching. But he does seem a bit like, are you okay? You're doing good, bro. <laughs> Apparently, uh, today I, I thought the session would be a little bit later because I usually trade on the US time, so that's like 12 to about 6 a.m. So I, I didn't know we were going to wake up at 10 o'clock for today's class. He-Man, his name is He-Man. We have He-Man, Brightman, what's next? Superman, Batman? Um, what's that? Metaverse! Oh, that's, Metaverse. That's Full stop, that's all I know. Okay. I actually know nothing about Web3. Uh, I feel like even just now as you're going through that, this very slide, I was like, Question mark. But, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I think all I know is like it's the third generation of the web. No sh Hey man, I, I really you try, you try. Okay, I try uh, something to involve yeah. Okay, it involves more of like <laughs> currencies and stuff. Yeah, something like that, yeah. I mean, 3 does mean the third generation. Web 3.0 is the third generation of the internet. Wow, so insightful, bright man. Hey, so yeah. insightful. <laughs> so, I mean, you guys shared some points. I think uh, some of them are quite relevant. Some of them seem a little bit distant. Uh, but I think we can do a quick cover to kind of see where you guys are at. And then I'll just do better than you Teacher got price. Uh, unfortunately, my portfolio is quite small. Right. Uh, if I have some extras, oh. I would love to uh, airdrop you guys some of them. <gasps> Sorry, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. If you give us one of the NFT, right? Yeah. We don't make money, right? Because we really make No, we sell. Oh, we, we sell. sell. If you we sell, sell the NFT, yeah. 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 See, we do. <laughs> this is like super <laughs> market, you don't know. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so you, if, you, if, you, if I sell it to you, you own it. So if you sell it, then it's literally uh, uh, okay. your NFT. Okay, so my wallet address, right? <laughs> <laughs> to the exam and it's like She know nothing about Web3 And then come out second place See, this is the kind of person that you cannot trust in the NFT space <laughs> Dude, this is literally us in school Always competing for the top spot Spoiler alert, I won in school So stop trying to change history, Jermaine SHUT UP! <laughs> is the Web3 the same as blockchain? <laughs> huh? I don't know this one eh just go with your gut. Just whack your knee. Oh, I put false. I put. So who's, who's the one who put <laughs> Yahoo. Yeah, who? 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 Right. Oh, it's hey, right man. Right man with the name like that, you're not really very bright. It's <laughs> so between Jensen and I to the throw. Okay, so what is, what is an NFT? NFT. Well, yeah, not, I don't know what that is. Shit, very stressed eh? Yeah. It's okay, you will confirm no one. You don't yeah. know. Oh. Oh. Yeah. NFTs are used as, as tokens. So 
some people use it as profile pictures, some people are using it as passes. Uh, we got a lot more iterations of it coming up. But right now, we're still stuck with apes and goblins. Uh. So, who owns cryptocurrency? Wow. Mm. Oh, I don't know. This guy. Ah. Oh, we all got it right. I wasn't very sure. Oh, so. Yeah. Yeah. I tikam tikam. Yeah. No, but I mean, you guys, you guys kind of understand <laughs> what Web3 is already about. Oh, because it's decentralized, therefore Correct. the people have. Yeah, power. so the people control the market almost entirely. Obviously, there are some manipulations that can happen with institutions yeah, right. with bigger money. Yeah. But it's normal for the founders and the developers to own it. Chunk. The problem with that also is means that if they sell, uh, the market shifts. So it's also a good and bad once again. Like mm. it's not controlled, but it's also controllable. Mm. Right. So to be honest, every time I meet people, they always ask me Web3. They don't understand a lot. So I'm quite surprised that this class, although they say they don't really know anything, they seem pretty well prepared. Jump Jermaine obviously has been the fastest. I think you, the faster you are, the more points you get. So she gets an uh, airdrop later. I will I'll send her something nice. And then she will share with you what she's got. <laughs> I mean, that was the idea of it, right? <laughs> I would like yeah. to thank my mom. <laughs> please bring me out coffee, please. Okay. <laughs> So we've come to the part where we are going to go in depth into like what Web3 is about. So everyone has a, has a different definition of Web3. The main reason of that is because nobody really understands what it is yet. It's like when uh, internet first started, a lot of people were skeptical about it as well and then eventually it became something very big. But do you guys know that actually when the internet first started, it was pretty much for porn. Right? Huh? There was actually the, the funny thing about it. Oh my internet. god, I have no idea. Yeah, no, nobody really How understands do you know it. that? That's, I mean, it's something we, we oh. learn, learn about, right? Sorry. But humans are motivated by Sex. personal interest. Oh, sorry. Sex? Okay, I mean, for sure, for sure. <laughs> not, gonna, not gonna lie there. <laughs> Basically, people always find personal motivation first and then use that to build infrastructure. Right. Right. So, currently at Web3, NFTs is our personal motivation, right? We have something that's digital, visual, that we can look at and then kind of use that as a way to, to flex. Right? Now it's a flex game. Right, everybody's like showing off their profile pictures. Previously, we were controlled a lot by companies, a lot of by uh, the government. Right now, we are controlled by ourselves, right? So, you know how in, in real life, there's different types of currency and each one has different value? Is that the same as cryptocurrency? Are there different types of, like, iterations? Yeah. You know, I don't know. Correct. So, currencies work all about the same, right? I mean, I'm not a financial expert, but basically, it's supply and demand. So. When a, when a currency is in high demand and there's more volume in it, so usually the currency holds better than it. But it's also the problem in which you guys heard of Luna crash. Yep. Um, large amount of institutions were pulling out their money, which means that the value of the coin plummeted overnight. Yeah. So which is why a lot of people actually lost a lot of money. They actually dropped and dropped some tokens back, but it's hard to force back a coin because it's supply and demand, right? Wow. Apart from crypto, uh, the other very exciting part of our Web3 and one of the angles that's very popularly referred to is NFTs. You guys own any NFTs of your own? Yes, but I, said, I, I do own one, but it's like a zero value now. Oh! It's <laughs> so, okay, most NFTs are zero value. Yeah. I think when it comes to NFTs, right, like to really get the good ones, you gotta get whitelist. Yeah. Right, you gotta get whitelist and you gotta grind. They say grind in the Discord for yes. whitelist. So I'll tell you guys what, what so, someone that I know. Oh, right? oh, 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 she sounds very excited. No, no. <laughs> so, this person that I know um, gets a lot of really, really good NFTs. By grinding in the Discord, it's a, he's a guy. He grinds as a girl. Oh. And he goes in, he flirts she? with all the guys to get them to give him white lips. Yeah, they think he's a girl. Oh. Oh. And oh. He did the same thing in Maple Story as well. But Can you explain what's grinding? Because yeah. my, my iteration of grinding. It's not gyration. No? no, no. <laughs> yeah. okay. What is grinding? It it to explain it to us. Grinding is like when you go into the Discord and then you like talk, 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 you engage with people, yeah. you be part of the community mm. so that. Yeah, hustling. Yeah, hustle. Mm. Right. The grind. The grind. The grind. Mm. Yeah. Don't go in and twerk on people. No, that's no. Not what they get you. I'm going to be grinded. It works in real life. It works in real life, yeah, but not on Discord. So I want to ask you guys something like, you all know how much this uh, this JPEGs are worth. No, you guys take a take a guess. Oh, take a guess. Like, uh, gets one of, million. In terms of PM. Yeah, five hundred k. Wow. Okay. Four nine 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 nine. Hey, sorry. <laughs> so the cheapest bot ape currently on the market is about two hundred thousand US. 
So, uh, but cheapest, there's a catch, there's a slight catch, right? There's rarities involved in NFTs. So the rare ones can go for a few million dollars. So the next one I think I want to ask you guys, is something more recent is this potato looking goblin. After everyone lost a lot of money, the yeah. whole became very degen in the NFT space especially. People started creating the most obvious things out there and then it became like a hit. So this one was actually minted almost at free. So like there was no cost, all you do is you pay for gas. Okay. So Joe, Wait. what is gas? Exactly, that's what I was gonna ask. Like, what you say mint, you say gas. What is gas? Make a guess. <laughs> Make a guess of what yeah. gas is. Pay yeah. for a license fee. I don't know, right? So, guess, I mean, the thing about the uh, blockchain space, right? To make a transaction, someone has to do it for you, right? It's not like the bank where the bank does the transaction for you. Well, in the blockchain world, there's no centralized brand doing this. So, usually, someone, also known as a miner, is completing your transaction. So, actually, okay. trading NFTs is incredibly expensive as well because of fees. Right, so even though you think you make like 100 Ethereum when you sell, actually maybe you take away maybe 80 Ethereum because you're paying almost 20 Ethereum in gas sometimes. Today is seriously the quietest I've ever seen Brightman. <laughs> I was absorbing! He was All absorbing! <laughs> I was coming in a blank slate. I really did not know anything. So I really came here to actually learn and like sort of like learn everything from uh, Professor Heeman. Heeman. Okay, I want to discuss something about NFTs that is like totally not part of I mean, it's just more from the artist's point of view. Is if I was an artist and I've been you know, looked into an NFT world, um, how do I protect myself from being exploited? It's changed a little bit because most of the artists are not very business-centric. Yeah. Uh, this is, is very much economics already, right? Like you create a project, it's not just about an artwork that you launch and people buy, right? Some artists with big branding, they can. They can do it completely on their own. But usually they also struggle to market their own projects. So which is why it's still good because I feel it's given them another channel where they can profit from. Anyone who does any sort of art should get into the space because there's really limited channels for artists already. So I think this is probably one avenue they can explore while it lasts, right? Like I don't know where it's going to go from here. And also does that mean that um, you should also do your research on like whoever's approaching you to to do this project with? Like for example, if you like research on their history, their track record and things like that. With such money making opportunities, a lot of people make projects for cash grabs. So what has happened is a lot of people rug pull, we call it rug pull because make the money and then they run, they pull the rug, right? So with that, a lot of artists also get in, in trouble with this because they are part of the project and it, it damages their reputation. So doing homework on the, on the brand is very important. What about, you know, this whole like new thing of play to earn? Yeah. Is that something that you dabble with? Play to earn basically means you can enjoy a game and earn proper cryptocurrencies, right? You can even walk to earn, uh, sleep to earn, and more recently, and this is something that I just oh, saw, champions. <laughs> which I think might excite Joe. <laughs> you can sleep to earn? I'm ready, I'm ready, let's go. I, I particularly don't believe in a lot of the game fine models because there's no real economy to it. The problem when everyone makes money, and without someone losing is inflation. So a lot of like game five projects have like hit the hype and then drop. Right. And then they go like they basically become <laughs> all the good stuff about NFTs also I mean we touched a little bit on the on the bats as well. But now let's really get into like what this uh, this can really be. So this was a, a hack that happened to me two years ago. So three NFTs got transferred out <gasps> and uh, mm -hmm. totaling about ten thousand US gone in uh, two minutes actually. Yeah, literally clicked on a link and I thought I was minting something. Uh, everything seemed legit because there was a live um, chat going on during the mint which happens quite often. Mm -hmm. And then I realised uh, when I clicked it, he was asking me to approve something. I didn't register because I was like on a call and like doing it on the go. And then I realised when I came back, it's missing from my wallet. So this approval actually gave the hacker access to withdraw it from my wallet. It's very hard to get into a digital yeah, wallet yeah. on your own. Mm -hmm. But you can give people access to make changes to your wallet. So actually what I did when I clicked that min button was actually a reverse sort oh. of min, right? I gave them access, set approval to take it out from my wallet. Oh, yeah. You sort of like gave them permission. Yeah, ah. correct. So it's not even illegal, you know why? Because literally on a min, if I look at it again now, it did say you're giving permission to get access to your wallet. Uh. I didn't register it, it was small and I was like, okay, oh. you know, how bad can you? You see, coming from someone like he Man, who obviously looks very intelligent and smart, even he can lose NFT. So someone like me, yeah, I... I don't even trust myself. So how do you then keep yourself safe in this space? The wallets, that's one way you, uh, you can keep safe is to get them, right? Anything that is very valuable, people actually put them on an offline thumb drive. Call it a ledger yeah. wallet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's multiple ways to structure wallets. 
And uh, literally all you have to do is just make sure that your main one that contains your NFTs are never connected to other things. Mm. Um, and always, there's ways to disconnect things officially. Uh, if you disconnect things officially, there's no way people can get it. That's the beauty of the technology. Uh, so in like a quick uh, list, right? How would you identify certain potential scams? Like your phishing links, very sketchy DMs. Yeah. yeah, what else could you actually look up? For? So I mean, like, even yeah. like the government has issued a notice, right? Mm. Don't click links, right? Like Mac yeah. not yeah. sending yeah. links and stuff like that. Same thing applies to the Web3. Avoid links at all costs. If they come, they must come from the official uh, Discord. But even then, it's best to double check with the community before you begin, right? So no, no project really does like, we call it self mm. They don't out of the blue like launch a mint. It never really happens. So most people who are really they say, oh, yeah, yeah, I got free, go take one. Like, but usually it means that you get hacked. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually what happened with direct messages. They always tell you also to block your direct messages because people can actually see which server you are in and then if you're minting this, they will know as well. There's a lot about like Web3 today. Obviously, uh, a lot of what I know is still based on my own experience. There's a lot of people who like brand themselves as gurus. My only advice with that as well is don't really trust anyone. Always do your own research, kind of figure it out on your own. And then take uh, inputs from experts to, to, to make decisions. But that's pretty much as far as you can go. If you take a step back, even though the whole world is talking about NFTs today and the whole world is talking about cryptocurrency today, like, it is one of still many ways to make money. And if this is not your thing, there's other ways to make money and this is not the end all for all. So after attending the class, um, I am successfully can say like I'm from class uh, Web 2.0 to Web 2.5. Yeah, that's the 0.5 treatment. Oh, it was good actually. I think this has been the most attentive I've ever been in class for especially something about tech and NFTs and cryptocurrency. And I feel like before you can dwell on such things, you really gotta educate yourself about it a lot more. Because if you screw up in any way, it's really all on you. Nobody can help. I think at the end of the day, right, one important thing you have to remember is don't FOMO, right? If you FOMO and you're like, wow, other people make so much money, oh, I missed out on that opportunity, don't worry, like this space is moving every day. You will get your chance. Just don't buy high and sell low. That's the only thing I've learned here today. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe. And you can comment like below, like what kind of like what do you think about Web3? You know, any anything you want us to know or you have any questions and stuff, yeah, feel free to comment below. So thank you and that's all for today. Bye bye! bye. bye.